The Peter Schiff Show. Today I want to follow up on the theme that I addressed not too long ago in the podcast where I was commenting on the the media's reaction to the results of the trial where Ellen Powell had sued her former employer, Kleiner Perkins, based on sexual discrimination. She claimed that she was denied promotion and then later fired in retaliation for her alleging that she was the victim of sexual discrimination. Well, according to the jury, the only victim was Kleiner Perkins. They made the mistake of hiring her. Uh, They basically found all of her claims to be meritless. And Kleiner Perkins prevailed on, on all of the allegations of the plaintiff. And my point was not the, the verdict, but the media's reaction, instead of condemning Ms. Powell for having lied and having file, filed false charges against her employer, simply trying to extort uh, a, a huge unearned payday, uh, no, they basically talked about her as if she was a hero, she was courageous to come forward, courageous, heroic about coming forward with a lie, but no uh, articles written about how awful it is for Kleiner Perkins to have been dragged through the mud and articles about how terrible it is when women uh, or anybody falsely accuses somebody of doing something and uh, now they have to defend themselves. All the articles were still flattering against Ms. Powell and not many people were trying to defend Kleiner Perkins. I mean, maybe the, the inference is that, well, they got away with it. Yeah, they probably discriminated against her, but there just wasn't enough evidence to prove it. So they got lucky, right? That was the spin uh, that they placed on this. And I said, look, there's a big media double standard. Uh, This is the way it goes. Uh, If a woman uh, says something, it's believed that she can do no wrong because she's a woman. She's part of the victimized class and companies, corporations, they're the bad guys. And even if they're exonerated in a courtroom, it doesn't mean that they're not guilty, right? It's just the system failed. And of course, they're saying, look, we don't want to discourage other women from coming forward and filing frivolous false suits just because this woman wasn't able to succeed doesn't mean that the next woman won't, right? Well, here, this is even a worse example, I think. And it has to do with the Rolling Stone article that came out where it the the article basically told the story which we now know was complete fiction of a woman who uh, they called Jackie right they didn't want to you know they didn't want to give her real name right out of concern for the victim right uh, but it told the story of how Jackie was supposedly gang gang raped in a fraternity house at the University of Virginia. And as we now know, it was a complete fabrication. It didn't happen. Jackie, or whatever her name is, just made the whole thing up. Yet the reporter just believed her story and didn't even want to try to verify it uh, because she didn't want to risk further traumatizing um, the, the victim, right? She had already been traumatized by this gang rape, And she didn't want to uh, further the trauma by making her prove uh, any of the things that she said actually happened. So the reporter just accepted it out of deference and concern for the woman. But apparently she had no concern about the men who were being accused of rape, right? She she didn't want to uh, do anything to traumatize the woman but she didn't care anything about what trauma may befall the men uh, in this situation if, in fact, they didn't rape her and they were being accused wrongly. But, of course, the reporter just believed the woman, right? Because, after all, women don't lie and men rape. So if a woman claims she was raped, well, she must be telling the truth because she's a woman and the people who raped her are men, and so we're just going to believe the story without ever thinking that maybe, maybe this woman crying rape 
has some kind of ulterior agenda, has some kind of motive. Maybe the, the, there, maybe she's just, uh, you know, maybe she feels that she was wrong somehow by one of these guys and she's trying to get revenge. Who knows? There's all sorts of reasons why somebody may falsely accuse somebody else of rape. But uh, the reporter didn't do anything to verify the claim. They just ran with the story anyway, right? Now, now that all the, the facts are out, she comes forward with an apology, right? That, you know, she was wrong, right? And and I'm going to read the apology. This is, you know, a written apology for uh, what she wrote. And this her name is Sabrina Rubin Elderly, right? She's the author of the article. And this is her apology, right? This is her supposed apology. Quote, the past few months since my Rolling Stone article, a rape on campus was first called into question, have been among the most painful of my life. Yeah, what about the pain for the guys at the frat house who were wrongfully accused of, uh, of rape? Wasn't that pretty painful for them? But I digress. Let me finish with this apology. Reading the Columbia account of the mistakes and my misjudgments in my reporting was a brutal and humbling experience. I want to offer my deepest apologies to Rolling Stone's readers, to my Rolling Stone's editors and colleagues, to the University of Virginia community, and to any victims of sexual assault who may feel fearful as a result of my article. So that's it. That's the apology. Now, she writes some more stuff, but this is the end of the apology. Do you notice anything missing from her apology? I mean, she's apologizing to all sorts of people, right, to her readers, which, yeah, makes sense. I mean, I think the readers are old in apology for being told a bunch of lies. But, you know, she she apologizes to the victims of sexual assault, meaning actual sexual assaults, not the one that she wrote about, but ones that have actually happened. She's apologizing to those victims. Why? Because somehow the fact that this woman lied, it might discourage other women who actually were raped from coming forward. I mean, if anything, maybe this will discourage other false allegations of rape from being raised, which would be a good thing. But the most interesting thing about this so-called apology is whom she does not apologize to. And that is the guys that were accused of rape, right? The individual members of the Phi Kappa Psi fraternity. What about the fraternity itself? What about the Greek system on that particular campus? But this particular house and the members of this particular fraternity, you know, probably went through their own version of hell as a result of these false allegations that they uh, needed to uh, defend themselves against, that they needed to live through. And where is the apology to them? You know, instead of apologizing to the supposed women who had been raped because of the woman that she wrote about was not raped, what about apologizing to the other men who have been falsely accused of rape? That is the real story here. It is about how easy it is to falsely accuse somebody of rape and how easy it is for people to believe a false allegation. So if she's going to report, I mean, if she's going to apologize to anybody beyond the innocent victims of her story, the men who did nothing wrong, but for dra- well, who were dragged through the mud based on her lousy reporting, based on her rush to judgment, based on her own feminism, Right, because she chose to believe a woman simply because she was a woman and she cared nothing for the feelings of men. Right? Because remember, she said that, well, she didn't want to, you know, traumatize this rape victim uh, by asking her to actually prove her allegations, or she didn't want to talk to the other uh, house members, the rapers, because it might somehow. Uh, traumatized the rape victim, knowing that this reporter went to talk to these people of whatever reason she had. She was very careful and very delicate in the way she handled uh, uh, Jackie, 
right, the name given to the alleged victim, while the real victims, the guys who were falsely accused of rape, was the reporter at all concerned about the trauma that they might go through if the allegations were false and she prints them anyway? Or is it just, well, who cares? You know, if men are falsely accused of rape, no big deal. I mean, they're tough. They're men. They can take it, right? But women, oh, no, women are so delicate that if they cry rape, we just have to believe them uh, and we can't question them because, you know, we don't, we don't want to hurt their feelings. We don't want to damage them. They're so delicate. They're so fragile. I mean, is that a sexist attitude that certainly this reporter has when she distinguishes between men and women that men don't have feelings and it's OK uh, to make false allegations? And, you know, they can they can respond to trauma well, uh, but women can't. So we have to take extra precautions when we're dealing with women that we don't have to take when we're dealing with men. You know, I mean, if men and women are equal, then why can't they be treated equally? If you're going to have all this courtesy about trying not to traumatize a woman, how about extending the same courtesy to men and try not to traumatize them? So don't just write an article accusing people of rape when you have no proof that a rape was committed other than the story told by one individual. Because people can lie. And again, why are women so quick to assume that a man could commit a rape, but not that a woman could tell a lie? You know, it's a lot easier to lie than to rape. And of course, I'm not saying that rapes don't occur. They do. But women also lie about having been raped. That happens too. You know, but everybody just wants to assume the worst when it comes to a man and assume the best when it comes to a woman. And, you know, a lot of these rapes too are not, you know, violent assaults, right? They're date rapes. Uh, and, you know, I'm not that I am diminishing a date rape. You know, if a guy takes advantage of a woman who's had too much to drink, I mean, the guy's a cad. Uh, it's wrong. It's bad behavior. Um, but chances are, you know, most guys that end up having sex with a woman who's had too much to drink, they've probably had too much to drink themselves. Again, not that I'm excusing the behavior, uh, but alcohol uh, comes into play. But what do you think is worse? A guy who, while drunk, takes advantage of another woman who's drunk, right, and who has technically raped her, or a woman, while completely sober, under no influence of alcohol whatsoever, knowingly and falsely accuses a guy of raping her who didn't rape her. What's worse? Right? To me, I think the false allegation of rape made while totally sober and under no inf other influence, calculated knowingly accusing somebody of a crime for which they can end up in prison for who knows how long versus, you know, you know, behaving obnoxiously while you've while, while you've had too much to drink. Right. So you've got to keep a perspective on this and keep things in perspective. But the media doesn't do this. The reporters don't do this. And it is because of the incredible double standard when it comes to uh, women and men and the way they're treated by reporters, by the media. Yet they constantly profess we want equality. We want a level playing field. Well, why don't they level it? Now, I don't know why there isn't more of an outrage here with respect to this woman's apology. How can she apologize to everybody except the actual victims of her article? The people who were hurt the most, right, are the people who are falsely uh, accused. But also, why isn't the reporter more outraged at the woman who lied to her? Right. Somebody lied to you. She's very upset. Yes, I didn't do my homework. I should have checked out the story. But where is the condemnation of the woman who lied? She's afraid to even say that we have to handle this with kit gloves. She's so afraid that she can't call out a liar for having lied because somehow what? That would be anti-women. Do we have do we have to be so protective of women that even when they commit crimes, when they lie, that we still can't say that what they did was wrong? I mean, how can we ignore that? There, there, there has got to be equal treatment. I'm sure if a man lies, 
you know, then yes, he's going to be held accountable. But why don't we have the same standard when it comes to women, especially when they do something like this, especially when they lie about being raped? You know, if you pretend that you really care about all the women who actually are raped, right? And I'm not saying that women are never raped. Of course they are. But what the Rolling Stone reporter should be outraged about is the women who are falsely accusing people of rape, like the person that she interviewed. That's who she should address her anger. Those are the ones that are making it tough for women to come forward. It's because of all the false allegations that some people might not be uh, prone to believe the true ones. So be mad at the women who are falsely accusing men of rape and apologize to the men who have been falsely accused. Instead, you know, her apology doesn't amount to anything um, because when you apologize, you're supposed to apologize to the people you hurt. Now, yes, I can see in a way that she misled the readers of the Rolling Stone and the editors and all that. Sure, you can apologize to them. Secondary, secondary apology. The primary apology has to go to the individual members of uh, the fraternity, to the fraternity itself, Phi Kappa Psi, maybe to the university. I mean, that's the order that the apology needs to come. And right? not this phony, baloney, politically correct kind of apology where she refuses. She refuses to condemn the liar, the woman who came forward and lied about a rape that was never committed, right? And to apologize to the men who were unnecessarily dragged through the mud, who had their reputations tarnished because this reporter was a sexist. That's what she was. She believed a woman because she was a woman. And she believed that the guys raped her just because they were guys. She made her judgments based on the sex of the individuals. She believed the woman because she was a woman. And she believed the men were rapists because they were men. This is a very sexist, discriminatory way in which she uh, approaches her job, her life. Apologize for that. Attention listeners, I have an urgent message for you. We're in the middle of a war. The global conflict is destroying the lives of millions without a single bomb being dropped. It's called the International Currency War, and your bank account has been drafted to fight. The victims in this conflict are our currencies, the dollar, the euro, the yen, the pound. They are all heading to zero as irresponsible central banks compete to see who can print the most the fastest. But there's one form of money politicians and central banks can't destroy, gold. Today, it's more important than ever to understand the value of gold in your portfolio and to keep a close eye on major market developments. Subscribe to my monthly video cast and you'll be the first to hear my latest analysis on gold investing and the currency wars. Visit goldvideocast.com right now to subscribe for free. I call the dot-com bust, then the housing bust, and I advise clients to diversify into foreign equities and hard assets while the rest of Wall Street laughed at me. Now I want to keep you up to date on the next crisis that is brewing. My gold video cast also includes personal interviews I've conducted with other contrarian investors like Jim Rickards and Axel Merck. Gold has gone up 256% since 2003, but it has a lot further to go. Don't miss the rally. You can prosper during this time of currency wars, but only if you stay educated. Get a free subscription to my gold video cast at goldvideocast.com. That's goldvideocast.com.